Hello and welcome back to Microsoft Project 2010. We're almost at the point that we can start creating our first project but before that a couple of words of warning. Although Microsoft Project is a great tool for helping you to manage a project it can't actually manage a project for you. And so in a situation like this one where we're about to start a new project it can't actually gather the information you need. You have to do that yourself. We're going to use as our example the building of a regular domestic house. Now you may not know much about building houses, I, I don't know much about it myself but I think all of us live in houses, or most of us do anyway, and probably have some idea of what's involved. So in terms of a simple first example I, I think building a house is a great point to start. But it also makes the point in terms of learning project that the principles we need don't really depend on knowing the exact details of how to build a house. We can develop those as we go along. Now it's a great tool but it can't do the management for you. And as we'll see at various points throughout this course it's the things that you do away from the PC that make all the difference. This is a tool to help you, not to do the job for you. So, in order to build this house, I've pretty much worked out the sequence of events. First thing I need to do is to clear the site. Secondly, I need to lay the foundations. Thirdly, I need to put in the floor. Next, the walls. And finally, the roof. Now, you probably realize I've missed a few steps out there and we'll, we'll see later on the, how we add those missing steps in but that's a good starting point and the other good starting point is that once I've got my basic information together I go to backstage view using the file tab and click on new now when we request a new project we have a number of options. We're going to use blank project, we're going to start from scratch with this one. But if we'd created projects before and save them as project templates we could access those templates either from the recent templates list or from storage area called My Templates. We can also do the following we can create a project from an existing project, we can create one from an Excel workbook, or we can create one from a SharePoint task list. Now in addition, Office.com, Microsoft's Office.com offers us some useful starting templates. So for instance, if I go for plans and then business plans, Microsoft offers me some template business plans that I can use free of charge. There's a training rollout initiative plan, a project management plan, audit preparation process plan, and we'll come back and look at a couple of those later on. But for the moment, for this particular exercise, we're just going to start with a blank project. Now when it comes to actually creating the project, nothing could be simpler really. Um, I finish up with the Gantt chart as my default view. Chart on the right, there's nothing in it at the moment. But I start putting my tasks in. Now interestingly you don't actually have to put these in the order you intend to execute them. But it does make life a lot easier later on. Um, so let's do it pretty much in the order that I said just now. The first task was to clear the site. So I click in that box gets highlighted and I'm just going to type clear site. Now having typed there if I then click in duration I can actually say how long I think that is going to take. Now if I was really a, a house builder I'd know exactly how long I intend that to take but I'm going to allow myself a week. These little rollers here I can use to increase the duration of the task. So I'm going to say that's five days work and then I'm going to click in ready to start the next task. Now what happens as soon as I put that in is that a bar appears on the Gantt chart 
starting on today's date it's actually Tuesday the 15th of February today and now my task is scheduled you'll notice that it goes from Tuesday the 15th to Monday the 21st that's five days in working time ignoring the weekend now things like dealing with weekends and so on we'll, we'll come back to later but for the moment it's set up to work on pretty much on a standard working week now my next task is to lay the foundations now depending on your country you may call these footings or something else but we'll say foundations most people would, would understand that statement and I'm going to allow a week for that as well then I go to my next task and my next task is to erect the walls uh, I think I might allow two weeks for that then I'm going to say put on the roof and I'm going to allow for two weeks for that as well so effectively there is my project my four simple little tasks and my four tasks when I click away from the last one appear in the Gantt chart on the right now you may be looking at that schedule and thinking it looks a bit strange because I've got four tasks all happening at the same time which is really not how you would uh, build this sort of house um, don't worry about that at the moment because first of all I'm going to do what one should always do in this situation and that is save a copy of what I've already done now we saw just now in backstage view uh, the save as option so we click on file for backstage view and then click on save as to bring up the save as dialog now a Microsoft project file has an extension of MPP I've called this one house build one dot MPP and I'm saving it in my all project schedules folder having done that I just click on save once it's saved the name appears in the title in Microsoft project and of course it will now appear in my recent projects list in backstage view and I'll be able to go back to it at any time to do some more work on it now let's start to do some very straightforward things to improve this schedule and the most obvious thing with it is that the tasks are just not happening in sequence now to correct this in a very simple way if I click on the task tab on the ribbon and then select the first task which is clear site now to select a task just click anywhere in the row of its table entry so that is now selected and you can see that it's highlighted if I want to select two tasks which I do if I hold the control key down and select the second one I've now got two tasks selected and for these two clear site lay foundations the second should start after the first finishes this is a task dependency and we'll spend quite a bit of time looking at task dependencies later on but for the moment we're going to say clear site happens then lay foundations happens now on the task tab there is a command in the schedule group called link tasks link the selected task so that one task cannot start until another task is finished now there are many ways of doing this but the simplest one is this link tasks click this command button and see what happens and of course it's very easy to see what's happened because we now have a proper sequence of events with clear sight followed by lay foundations and 
it'd be no surprise to learn that if I now click on the second task, Lay Foundations Alone, and then hold the control key down and select the third one, Erect Walls, and click on Link Task again, basically now Erect Walls won't happen until Lay Foundations is finished. Let's repeat that one more time for the last pair of tasks. And there we are, we have all four of our tasks in sequence. Now one recurring theme or issue when you're working with Microsoft Project is trying to keep everything in view and bear in mind we've got an extremely simple project here that only lasts about six weeks. Um, it's a bit annoying that we can't see it all at once so let's look at how we actually bring a bit more of it into view. Well you've seen one method already but one thing we can do is the dividing vertical bar between the two views, the table view and the Gantt chart itself can be dragged left and right so if I hover over it until I get the two vertical bars with the two little arrows I can move that away to the left to give myself a bit more Gantt chart I can do the same in the header of any of the columns here so I can make some of these columns a little bit narrower I can drag that across the general approach is always to get that vertical bar or bars the two little arrows and then you can drag something to make it a little bit narrower give yourself a bit more space and then that's nearly there now if I move use the cursor at the bottom the bar at the bottom move that across and then finally I can use the zoom slider which we saw before click on that move it a little leftwards and there we are I've got my schedule in a much better view now that's uh, a pretty good start on our project I would suggest as you follow this course that you create a project of your own with perhaps half a dozen tasks with some simple dependencies like these maybe even use this one or a variation on this one but it's useful to have at least one other project and you'll develop it in line with the material that we're covering in these lessons now the next thing we're going to do is to move on to start to look in more detail about the information in a task but before we do we'll do what we always do which is go to file and click on save. I'll see you later.